Hello students, and welcome to this new unit, Unit 4, Triangle Relationships, to include congruence. Today we're specifically going to talk about triangle side and angle theorems, but I'm really excited about this unit because triangles are in everything, right? They're one of our fundamental things that we need to be able to do things like construction and to be able to solve some really interesting problems. So, let's go ahead and just jump into it. So our topic today is triangle side and angle theorems. And our objective today is that we will make a conjecture about the side lengths and the interior angles of a triangle using journal notes and triangles practice. And the first thing that I'm going to state is the triangle inequality theorem. And the triangle inequality theorem is that the sum of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. And that's a lot of English for something that's kind of very succinct in math. It's just to say that given any two sides, the third side must be shorter. So given any combination, so that would be A plus B must be less than C. I'm sorry, that's A plus B is greater than C, right? And then we have B plus C is greater than A. And we can also have the combination of A plus C is greater than B. So the combination of any two sides will always be greater than the length of the third side. So that's a relatively simple thing to say. Um, if we want to do a quick example of this, we can find the value of a third side. So for instance, if I wanted a valid triangle here, I could say if I had the side lengths of 3, 4, and 5, all I have to do is make sure that A plus B is less than C. So I could say 3 plus 4 is less than 5, that's true, uh, and then b plus c is less than a, so that would be 5 plus 4, and I keep saying less than, I mean greater than here, is going to be greater than 3, or I can say 3 plus 5 will be greater than 4, and that's also true, so this is a valid triangle. Alright, so let's look in example 1. Alright, so in example one, we are looking to find the range of values of side x given the other two sides. So we want to kind of develop the idea of what x could be to make this a valid triangle, right? Because we know that triangles meet certain requirements. One of those requirements is our triangle inequality theorem, which says that the sum of any two sides of the triangle is greater than the length of the third side. So we're looking for x, and we have some constraints on the system. So I know that x must be less than 4 plus 10 because I know that the sum of any two sides is greater than the length of the of the third. So I know that x is less than 4 plus 10. Well that tells me an upper bound, right? I know that x is going to be less than 14 but I also need to know a lower bound, right? I need something that will tell me the minimum number that x could be. So let's pull in another one of our statements, right? I know that 4 and x must have a sum which is greater than 10. Because if I say that a is 4, b is 10, and x is c, then I can come up here and I can say, oh, well, I know that a plus c must be greater than b, right? So I can use that here. a plus c is greater than b. And I know that A is going to be 4, and C is going to be X, and then I've also got 10 is B. So now I know that, and what I want to do is I want to rearrange this so that X is by itself, right? So then I can say X is greater than 10 minus 4 will be 6. So now I have X is less than 14, and X is greater than 6. But those, I can rewrite this as 6 is less than x, which is less than 14. So that's the range of all possible values for x. So that'll actually be my answer for this, this particular problem, right? Because we just have to find the range of values of the side of x given those two sides. All right, so let's move on. We've seen how to find a third side, right, or a range for a third side. We'll get to actually finding the third side later. But now we want to determine whether or not something is a triangle or not a triangle using this theorem. 
So we have three sets of triplets, right? And we want to determine if these triplets form a triangle. So we need to run through all of our checks. So 3 plus 4 is less than 5. And we already did this one, actually, so we don't have to worry too much about this one. 4 plus 5 is indeed greater than 3. And then 3 plus 5 will indeed be greater than 4. So we can form a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So yes, this is a triangle. And we can actually draw what it might look like. So if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4. And actually, I'm going to change this a little bit because I've made a little bit of a mistake. Uh, I know that 5 is the longest, so that's going to kind of guide me here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And then if I connect those two, this is actually a segment that will be 5 in length. So this is 4, this is 3, and this is 5. And it actually forms a right triangle. This is one of our very special right triangles. All right, so now let's do example 3, right? So we need to do 3 plus 5 is greater than 10. Well, that's false. That's not true. So we can automatically say that this is not a triangle. And furthermore, we can go and we can show that it's not by writing out this 10, right? 10. And then if I tried to do a length of 3 here, I'm just going to get a little, uh, a little leg there and then a length of 5. And we see that there's really no way that they're ever going to stretch across that chasm, right? So that's 3, that's 5, and then that's 10. So that makes sense. This is not going to form a triangle. And then finally, we say 5 plus 5 is greater than 10. And this is also false. So we know that this is not a triangle. All right, so now we know a lot about the side lengths of a triangle and identifying whether or not it is a triangle based on the side lengths. But we're doing triangle side and angle theorems. So we have to get through our angles now. So first off, let's just talk about different classifications of triangles. Remember your acute triangles. If we have an acute triangle, what that means is that all three of the angles are acute. And remember that an acute angle is one which is less than 90 degrees. So we could draw something a little bit like that. So that's an example of an acute, right? So all angles are acute. We can make an obtuse angle, and an obtuse triangle has a single obtuse angle in it. We can have a right triangle, which as you guys know, is simply a triangle that has a right angle in it. And then finally, we have the equilateral triangle, which equi, right, the same, lateral, meaning sides, just means a triangle that has side lengths that are all the same. Or we can say all sides congruent. All right, so now let's talk about the sum of interior angles of a triangle. So the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, we can know is going to be 180 degrees. And this is a really powerful statement. And this will allow us to do um, something called trigonometry in, in a little bit here. So we know about the sum of the interior angles. But now I also want to talk about, and there's a little mistake here, this needs to say exterior angles. So the sum of exterior angles of a triangle. So the exterior angle, if we're looking at the triangle, right, and we were to extend these lines past the actual triangle itself, this is going to be an exterior angle. And what's interesting about the exterior angles is that if we take the exterior angles 
and we were to add them all up, we have a theorem that will state that their sum will be 360 degrees. So now, knowing those two facts, we can go and do an example problem. So if we're trying to find a missing angle, and we are given an x, 96, and 48, and then a y here, we can actually find both x and y. So for x, we know that the sum of these interior angles has to be 180 degrees. So we can say 96 plus 48 plus x is equal to 180 degrees. And then from there, I can add these two like terms. And so I'll get 144 plus x equals 180. And then x will equal 36 degrees. For y, we can do something similar, right? So there's a couple different ways that you might solve y. The way that I'm going to solve it is I'm going to note that an interior and exterior angle appear to be supplementary, and that's always going to be true whenever you have a line like this. So they are indeed going to be supplementary. So then 48 plus y will equal 180, and then y is equal to 132 degrees. So that's one more fact that you can write here about exterior angles. So we can say that the sum of an interior angle and its exterior angle is always supplementary. All right, so that's it for our notes today. In your reflection, what I need you guys to answer is what are the four different types of triangles that we learned today based on their angles, and how can you tell if three segments are going to form a triangle? So respond to both of those in your reflection. Let me know for your stamp, and then go ahead and get started on your practice for today. If you have any questions, please let me know, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.